what's going on everybody this is leo with the fight game podcast i'm not wearing my shirt today i wore it yesterday at valhalla fc valhalla number two um that happened in sterling virginia and let me tell you it was a hell of a an event um we ended up seeing um i'd say some very very close fights uh, a couple of exhibitions that look not very, not like exhibitions at all yeah and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, first time that we've actually done this where we, we're actually going to do a, uh, we're going to watch the fight here on our monitor and we're going to break it down step by step. Of course, I got Crew Paul over here. Let me see if I can get him on the screen here. We got Crew Paul and he's going to make sure, and we're going to make sure that he, uh, or he's going to make sure that we're honest and uh, actually seeing what it is. For what it is okay what's up everybody we're back and uh we haven't technically started the show yet but now we are so here it is um of course if you guys uh love mixed martial uh, mixed martial arts brazilian jiu-jitsu sambo karate taekwondo <laughs> i don't know this. if you like combat sports in general okay and uh you represent the dmv the dc maryland virginia area then this is the place that you need to be um we are always always looking for new fans so that we can continue doing what we're doing, not just for each other, but for all you guys. Um, like I said today, I got the pleasure of having Crew Paul here, and he's going to make sure that we are watching this these fights and uh, analyzing them with an expert eye, okay? So thank you for being here, Paul. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to be here. Uh, you'll have to excuse my voice. It's a little bit choppy right now, only because, because of my participation in the fights last night. I was cornering some of the fighters, so... There was a lot of screaming involved, and this usually happens day after, like I lose my voice kind of deal. But you know, we'll 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 make do, and we'll do. I'll do the best that I can to make sure I'm, I'm at least uh, everybody can at least hear me. Yeah, his and you know, it's one thing being like um, the cornering so many people on one night. Yeah, you know, because Paul's not just cornering like one fighter; he's cornering you cornered like four or five fighters that night, didn't you? Yeah, well, it, 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 or not it, cornered, it, but yeah. like you were part of the yes entourage the yes. ringside entourage you were you were cut not, uh, were you cut man you were, uh, i was not, i didn't have to be cut man but i was definitely um lead corner for two of the fights and okay then i was also hand wrapping for three of the uh, three three or four of the fighters yeah so all that means is that he's uh you know he's screaming you're screaming your, your head right. off you know uh much. for your fighters man. absolutely well all right so um paul i'm gonna ask you a question and while you're answering that question i'm gonna yes. go ahead and do this but um, what do you think about the, you know, and I, I know you, you can't really be unbiased because, you know. you Yes. But what, what did you think about uh, the, the turnout and also the um, how the fights went? Like, did you, you feel like and, and with the lens of knowing what Muay Thai looks like? Right. So in that sense, <clears throat> first of all, thank you, David Arvello, for putting on a great show um, from a promotional standpoint i i think they handled it very very well i think it was it was done very very well by by david arvello and his team um they were well prepared for everything that was going to happen and you know if anything started to look like it was going to trip them up they were able to recover from it i know there were a couple of issues with some of the fighters and you know like like david david had said you know in our pr prior interview with him there was a lot there's a lot that can happen from the time the people agree to the fight to the actual night of the fight so there were some card adjustments there were people that dropped off the card so it got it got a little bit sketchy in in that sense but you know they recovered well from it they they you know they were able to do what they needed to do to make sure that they were able to put on a good quality show and I'll be honest with you. I wasn't sure how the turnout was going to be because you know no one did right yeah you know it it because the first thing that you see is like you know oh, it's going to be out of golds and then um what a lot of people don't realize is that that facility is really well suited for events like that it's it's actually got the room for it um you know the the crowd participation was amazing you had you know this you know as far as disciple mma and lotus Thai boxing goes we definitely try to roll deep especially if it's a local fight right you want to make sure that you have your your teammates there and stuff so that they can cheer you on and but what was cool was that even the folks that came from further away they all had a lot of participation from the crowd like they had a lot of 
they they were able to bring out a lot of their fans and you know let them you know feel represented in in the crowd also so it was really it was really cool it was really cool to see and you know when you talk about the quality of the show it overall if we're talking about like you know how well does how well was the matchmaking how well was you know how well was the refereeing and you know the enforcement of the rules etc cetera, etc cetera. i thought it was handled uh, very very well very very well you had you know chase walden who is now working for the state of virginia's dpor department of professional i can't remember what the whole um the whole acronym stands for but it's the professional governing body for uh, combat sports in the state of Virginia. Wow. So he's helping put together what the standards and rules are and how to enforce rule sets for proper Muay Thai in America. You know, um, he he's a firm believer in still growing the sport and growing the community here stateside in the West. And, you know, he's making... he He's able to provide them the knowledge to be able to say what what muay thai is supposed to look like when you see it right so um i think given that and plus also the way that they Dave, dave arvello kind of put the promotion together in the sense that he wanted to make sure that everybody had this feeling like it was a it had an authentic muay thai feel to it right um having the y crew having everybody seal the ring to make sure that you know they 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 still presented that part of the culture it, it was awesome to see that you know a promotion was willing to go that far and be and be respectful and also want to enforce that um, that cultural aspect of Muay Thai that makes it so unique to other combat sports, right? Because when you talk about like boxing or you know even um, glory uh, glory kickboxing K one you know stuff like that, you have people from Muay Thai backgrounds competing in those venues. But they don't get to represent Muay Thai fully, or at least to you know to a better extent, in 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 those kinds of promotions. So having the fighters come in, you know, a lot of the fighters wore you know the the traditional uh, Thai regalia, like er, people had Mongkons, Prajouds, and you know. So for those of you that don't know, the Mongkon is the um, the headpiece that you wear. It goes around your head. Uh, it's usually a decorated uh it's a decorated headband it's supposed to be representative of your school and you know it's a you know if we're talking about the traditional beliefs of it it's supposed to be a piece of clothing or a piece of uh, almost like armor that you wear to help protect you in, in your fight and it, it was cool to see a lot of schools representing that and you know a lot of people were rocking the mong calls when they were when they were walking in. And yeah, and it looked so cool, too. I mean, it, it's one thing, you know, you go in there with your American karate gi pants, you know, to yeah. kick some ass, you know. Like, that's that's cool and all, but but there's something about that authenticity of the monkle and the armbands. Yes, and absolutely. My buddy, actually, um, who came with me, he did he did some Muay Thai, like, you know, a little bit, mm -hmm. um, enough to know, you know, he <laughs> he surprised me because he's like, oh, he, he got teeped. And I was I looked at him like, how the hell did you know that <laughs> way? Um, but... You know, one thing he didn't know about was, oh, even though he, he studied, you know, some of the fighting techniques and stuff, sure. he didn't know about um, the the traditional stuff, you know. And, and one thing about, you know, the lineage that you and I have is that it's so drilled into us yeah. to know the traditions, to know all the, the Absolutely. you know, the cultural things. Very yeah. important. Not just because, oh, you know, you look the part, but, yeah. but because then, you, you know, because another question he asked me was like, are these guys fighting for free? I'm like, well, not necessarily. You know, they, these guys are fighting because, uh, you know, they need, they need the ring time and they need, yeah. and they need the experience and that's, that's good for them. You know, yeah. amateur fighting is, is fantastic. If you ever want to go pro or some people just want to, uh, see what they're all about, you know? Yeah. And so that's what this is for. Right. Yeah. And, uh, then he, then he asked about the, um, the, the Mongol and all that. And, and he's like, well, why do they wear all that? You know, and, uh, and I said, look, basically this, okay? In Thailand, it's a completely different mind frame. Yeah. We go into the ring here in, in you know, what, what do you call it? First, first, what do they call it? First world problem land, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and and we're, we're going in there for respect. We're going in there, 
you know, for some kind of pride thing usually, mm. or to better ourselves. You know, it's 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 yeah. it's ethereal almost. You know, they go in there at two years old, five years old. They're making money for themselves to feed people. Yeah, it's different. It's a job. It is a job out there, and I know that you know for some of the Thai competitors in Thailand, you know, when you get sent off to those camps, some of those kids aren't necessarily enjoying what they do. It's That's just, what I told them. Yeah, you know, it's it, but they become so good at it because it's what their job is, you know. Um, it's a skilled labor that has a shelf life, you know. It's a perishable skill. Like, if you let it go long enough, you it will it, it will diminish. So Absolutely. And the way that they train, you know, just from the way that they train to the way what they're doing really is that their daily grind is really about being able to get to that ring so that they can make money for their families and to be able to you know to live and survive you know i think it's it, it it's hugely important that people keep that in mind that you know that it is a national sport of thailand but it is also um a very significant source of income for a lot of people that participate in it in thailand right so yeah, yeah exactly i mean it's huge so that being said, perfect segue talking about the uh, kids that fight in Thailand. What about the kids that fight at FC Valhalla tomorrow, huh? Or yes, tomorrow, yeah. yesterday, right? Like we had a thirteen-year-old and a were they both thirteen or? I believe um, I believe Mahmoud's opponent was older than him. I think the, his opponent was fifteen. Yeah, fifteen-year-old versus a thirteen-year-old, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get right into the fight. But is there anything you want to say about uh, about your guys, Mahmoud? Right? Yes. Let's talk about Mahmoud a little bit. So. Mahmoud is um, it, it, just just to give everybody a little bit of background. When Mahmoud came to Disciple MMA to start training, he was a gangly eleven year old, like literally five foot three, four maybe. He, he was, was he was, he was short. short. He was shorter than me when he started two years ago. He's a tall man, no. and you know, literally over like time and like you know because of like vacations and because he was away from the school for a few months he came back and i was like you're unusually taller than me which is <laughs> weird i don't understand what's going on here and so but he's always been this you know meek quiet kid that trained hard he he, he you know he does everything he he has done everything we have asked him to do you know we're like go on the runs do the bag work do the pad work do the um you know, do the sparring, do the shark tanks. And, you know, he's in there. He gets in, he gets into sparring situations with freaking killers. Does you he, and, and did he come in, did Mahmoud come in not like being a complainer? You know, like, did he come in with a good attitude and a work ethic or? He definitely, he, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he was always, he was just quiet. You asked him to do something, he was going to try his best to do it, no matter what. Like, you know, you know, give me, give me a hundred burpees. And he, he kind of just looked dejected. <laughs> oh, no. You know, he's like, ah. Oh. And then he would go. He would just do it, you know. No complaining. Yeah. No complaining, no crying, no nothing like that. But he would do it. And, you know, there were times where, you know, and his dad would come and watch him train every now and then. And we wanted to make sure that his dad always felt like, you know, that he was safe and that he we would, we would never let his son get hurt. But at the same time, you know, you have to figure out how to push him and, you know, one of the main, and I've said this a hundred million times, if I haven't said it once, <laughs> is that um, one of the things that we always strive for at Disciple MMA is always 1% better every day, right? And you can't get to the next 1% until you push past your discomfort zone. All of your improvement is going to be on the opposite side of your discomfort. So we always had to keep them in that state of discomfort. A lot of times, there's a lot of times when we would have to keep him in that state of discomfort to the point where he just knew that no matter where he got, he knew that there was going to be another level, right? So you always, always kind of like dangling hope in front of him like, hey, this is hard today. Yeah. But tomorrow it's going to be like nothing. Absolutely. And, you know, you, he gets to prove that out all the time in training. You know, whenever we show him a new technique, you know, certain combos, things like that. He may not get it on the first try, but, you know, by the end of the session, by the end of the week, you know, he's throwing it, you know. And I think that, you know, as a as a coach, seeing that improvement in 
somebody so young and starting to let them unlock their own potential and to really see that you know you don't have to live by your limits if you live by your potential you can achieve so much more there you go you know and seeing seeing him grow and improve it, it's just phenomenal you know all respect to pentagon mma vivek nakarmi is a good is a friend of mine and um his camp always brings solid competitors and the kid that he brought xander was just i mean i was impressed yeah you want to talk about a ferocious you know yeah ferocious kid like he was he was trying to rip mamu's face off you know every time he threw those punches and kicks like he was he was he was trying to draw some blood and it was it was it was a great back and forth matchup and you know this time around we came out on the other side of it with the w well not not the w but <laughs> we, we, we it was we, an inter- we, it was an interesting w it was a it was a finish there, there was a you know it was supposed to be a three-round fight but they, they had to stop it early um but you know on any given night that can happen to us you know yeah so and like i said they came, they came to compete they were ready to rock and they you know they they were ready to, they were ready to bang that's what's up yeah so you, you cannot definitely can't fault it all right guys listen um we're going to make sure that our stream is good cuz some it appears that maybe the stream is not streaming so let me uh let we're going to take a quick break come right back all right all right I think we're streaming now. All right. So funny. Love the hiccups. You know, when uh, when Rogan, I remember watching his, when he when they started going to YouTube Live, and mm-hmm. uh, just like the, what do you call it, the um, all the technical hiccups that young Jamie would have to uh, <laughs> deal with. That's hilarious. And of course, that, and that's the good, that's the, that's the good thing with uh, having like a, what do you call it? A uh, a tech yeah. in the studio. You can always just blame him. Like, eh, what, are you, what are you doing over there? Come on, man. Yeah. And he's just looking at it like, dude, YouTube. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But um, I don't know. I. It, it's it's interesting though. It's it's really interesting the world we live in that we can <laughs> even be doing this. Yes. You know what I mean? It is pretty awesome to be able to you know to to do this whether it's for fun or for a living or whatever. But <laughs> it's. <laughs> I mean, and how many stars are like being being made? being discovered that would have never been they still would have been you know punching a clock somewhere right you know it, it, it is crazy i need you guys sorry i need you guys to let me know if you can uh, hear us if you can see us because right now youtube is telling me that we're offline but and yet I, and yet i see us moving and doing things so um yeah see there i go am i truly offline it doesn't look like I'm offline, but YouTube saying I'm offline doesn't make any freaking sense. But you know what? This is what I say. F it. Yeah, I don't get that. That's so... Oh. Hello. Hey, wave or something. I'm waving. Okay. And if you... And if, what? I'm so confused by this. Whatever. Anyway, I'm recording, so if this is all, if this is all messed up, then enjoy enjoy watching the video later yeah all right let's get right down to it so you got done talking about mahmoud and uh of course mr what is it via yeah S- xander via yeah let's watch the fight yeah all absolutely. right and 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 feel free i'm gonna have the sound low so feel free to kind of talk us through the fight sure 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 What's funny to me is that, like, you know, they came out just like they weren't going to touch gloves. They were just going to start swinging. I was like, yo, <laughs> we didn't expect that out of my mood. But we were like, all right, so this is this is where we're at. And if you notice, like, they're, I mean, they're just on a furious pace right now. And is that a bad idea, though? Because, uh, you know, usually Muay Thai fights, they should start out kind of slow, no? Sure, on a five-round fight, but it's a three-round fight, you know? So the pace has to be different. And, you know, when... When they're going for it, you know, you got to go for it. And I remember, you know, we, when we were thinking, when we were talking to him, we were like, you know, it's not rocket science to figure out what the strategy was for my mood. We were like, you're longer. You're going to be taller. Use your range. Keep them at the end of your punches. Keep them at the end of your kicks. Your teeps and your straight punches are going to be phenomenal for you. So 
but the here, one move your move your mic like this oh, way yeah like that just so they can see your beautiful face oh please i put it in front of my face the whole time if that was the case <laughs> shoot um you know and it, it with 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 the with Xander, Xander is like throwing heat with all of his kicks and punches. Those are nasty leg kicks he was throwing, right? And good teeps too. But it, it, yeah. but with a taller guy, your teeps just have to go a little higher. Yeah, and you know what? What, what was funny was you know we kept telling Mahmoud, we were like teep teep teep, and we're you know John and I are in the corner sounding like birds because we're like teep 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 teep. teep, teep. <laughs> <laughs> Between teep and OA, we were like okay, cool, and you know. Again, with the way that um, Muay Thai scoring is, you know, if you're the one that's backing up and you're the one getting pushed around the ring, you look like you're the one that's losing. Losing, yeah. Um, so at the end of that round, that was the uh, that was the uh, that was the thirty second mark or ten second ten second mark. And they thought it was uh, they thought it was the end of the, the round. End of the round, yeah. That kind of so then messes them up a little bit. Yeah, it it breaks up that rhythm, right? Because when you're at that pace, you're like, oh my god. But so. but come on, they're they're thirteen and fifteen. They, yeah. they can get right back into that rhythm. Yeah. So. So what was Scott telling uh, Mahmoud at this point? So John was like, "Look, I need you to move forward." He was like, "You're doing well. You're throwing all of your shots, but you're the one that's moving back. So don't give up any space, and you know, make sure that you're that you're the one that's that, that's pushing forward." And the whole time, like he's just looking at him, like he's. He's got this look on his face like, you know, deer in headlights kind of thing. And we're like asking him to repeat everything back to us. Do you think that he was, uh, what do you think? Now, he didn't get any, take any headshots or anything like that. So No, but you know what? With Mahmoud, he's very calm. Like he's just, and you see how he's, you know, he's barely breathing hard, you know, all yeah. that stuff. And it's just, that's just the way that he is. So he's a hard read because he's so deadpan. It's almost like talking like Fedor, you know what I mean? Oh like, yeah, which is a good and a good thing. I think. It's, it's a good thing. Oh, if I could have the Fedor face, the and stone demeanor, face, like you're just like a stone cold killer. Fedor's a gangster, or Fedor's a gangster. So All then right. here they come again, and so, then I was like, okay, so the pace is going, but now we were like, don't move back, don't move back. So then he, he you can see him like trying to counter and like push forward, but now he's like you know trying to get more aggressive with his shots. And he's looking for all, all of the Ooh, all of the forward motion. So we were he like, he is tagging him with those. It's it's almost like Xander is just heat seeking. Yeah. But but I mean, Ma, after he talked to uh, to Ajan, it looks like Mahmoud is just like, okay, I I just remembered I have a longer reach than him. Let me yeah. tag this kid. Yeah. Let me put him at the end of my punches and my knees. The best part was like you know he was really utilizing how his if you look at his teeps he was going for both he was adjusting he was going high and low with them right and he would he would attack the leg and then he would attack the he would attack the body and then he would go for for the outside kicks so it was always it, it, he kept Xander guessing which which made it really hard for him but which we were happy about but yeah. and then that was a trip that was that wasn't a that wasn't a knockdown he just kind of fell over they they got t they got wrapped up there oh. and the funny thing was if you notice my mood like immediately rushes forward and like you know tries to claim the space again but you know he, he and he he keeps going for it i was like okay cool and at that point we were like yeah oh and at here we started to see we were like oh okay now he's he's got xander backing up and we were like okay now it's time you just push forward claim it claim it you know we were like go for it go 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 we were, you know you just you just want him to keep throwing everything that he's been throwing that's landing so we were like no don't don't wait for the counter go just right. go just go right and his knees were just you know the that spear knee that he landed there was just you know it, it's just working really well for him so we were like oh man i think he's he's getting him with the knees the knees are getting him and this is and what's awesome is now we know at the end yeah this is where xander goes dude and it's like what is it, your mouthpiece your mouthpiece no he's motioning to his mouth boom starts puking on in the, in the blue corner <laughs> and and scott looks, and then, scott looks over <laughs> sees uh xander puking his guts out and he just raises both hands to triumph and then there yeah there's mahmoud like, yeah. freaking out so man how many times have you seen somebody puke in the ring after getting so many belly shots man okay so david arvello actually came up to me after this and he was like we just talked about this. we just talked about this he was like so all youth fights end in somebody puking in the ring. What is going on? And I was like, dude, I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> what is up with that? Um, you know, it's it's hard, right? Because like, 
and I mean, we've all taken body shots to, you know, body shots that have like taken the wind out. Just of us nasty. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. I hate, yeah. bo- I hate body shots. A lot of people will say that they're like, I would rather get knocked unconscious than to have to deal with the pain and suffering of a body shot. Or a liver Le- shot. Liver shot is just. It's a one hit or quitter. You're done. Yeah. Fight's over. Fight's over and you're hurting for a long time. Yeah. Like it's- <laughs> yeah. You can't, you, you're peeing blood and everything. Or no, I got, that's a kidney shot. That's yeah. a kidney shot. Liver shot's the shock. That's the shock to the system, right? Yes. That's, it just short circuits everything. That's and, right. And, 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 you know, Anthony, Anthony Cordero loves his liver shots. He's a liver shot technician. Huh? Yes. He, <laughs> he loves looking for that. He loves trying to find that liver shot. And um, I remember a long time ago, he hit me with one and it like, like everything just starts to shut down. Like you're like. And the, the I think what's worst about what's the the worst thing about liver shots is the delay, from impact to pain. There's a maybe like a point three point five second delay in when it hits, and it is just so excruciating when it happens. So like when, you know, when we're training, when Anthony and I are training on pads, I'll put the belly pad on and I'll put the thickest part of it in front of my liver. And I'm like, I remember a game that Anthony and I would play was like, you know, I bet you can't bring me down with the pad on. And so he's like, oh, yeah, okay. So I'd have him go over a combo where it ends in the liver shot and just to try and see if he can get it positioned enough to take me down even with the belly pad on. And he, <laughs> and he'd be able to do it. And his, yeah, he hasn't been able to do it lately because he's a lot lighter now. So he doesn't have a lot, as much weight to move. But, you know, he's, got, he's gotten <laughs> close. And it's... The worst part is like you know you think you're okay, but literally it's that ha- three point three to point five seconds where you're like, oh no, I'm okay, and then you're like, oh wait, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, whoa, 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 and you're doing the the X like. Yeah. Well, first, because what happens is like you know your body immediately curls over, and no matter how it, intellectually you're like, no, straighten up, you're okay. No matter how much you try to straighten up, you're just being your body is just saying, crumpled. no, we're gonna crumple yeah. and we're gonna curl into a ball and we're gonna cry for a minute and yeah. and and then you're gonna be okay anybody and, who can fight through a shot like that is a beast it, it it takes a lot of you know mental fortitude to be able to get through that to trick shot. to trick your body into thinking no you're, you're good yeah you're good you're good and <laughs> let me um all right let me uh i'm gonna put on the next one yeah start watching that start commenting i'm gonna get you some water how about that oh that would be awesome okay. thank you all right so here's the next match this is uh Okay, I'm a, I'm a little confused because obviously the it thing went from the bottom up, and they started no, changing the order. No, no, no. I'm good with that. It, yeah, it's the it's it's the it's, apparently we we weren't sure who was fighting who. <laughs> like like apparently this playbill or whatever uh-huh. is, is not accurate oh, right. to what actually happened, right? Yes. So like the Michael Capone fight versus Dakota uh, Donnell or Donnell, uh-huh. um, that fight didn't happen. Right. That's correct. Do you know anything about that? Um. I believe Michael, uh, I saw a post from Capone on Facebook that said that his opponent had to back out for uh, various reasons. So I'm not sure exactly what those reasons were, but he had to back out, unfortunately. Okay. So the one that we have right now looks like it's Dwayne Powers and Giovanni Wiley Miller. All right, cool. So let me put that on. You just tell me when you are ready, sir. Yes, sir. All right, and Dwayne is the one with the ponytail, I believe. He's from uh, from the House of Muay Thai uh, out in Virginia Beach area, Newport News. That's uh, Jake Chamberlain School. Shout out to shout out to the house guys. You guys are awesome. Um, love watching these guys fight because they definitely have the uh, the whole they're traditionalist as well. They're very very in tune with uh, with Muay Thai and the culture and. Um, understanding how the techniques really work and Jake is a phenomenal coach for those guys and you know does a great job training them his opponent I'm not I I, I, I don't have a lot of inf- intel on his school but if you see that body shot it was just totally crushing we were I know that Jake was all Jake Jake's thing was kind of like you know we, we, we want to make sure that you know they look for all the opportunities that they have and take advantage of it so but definitely great technique i feel like i feel i really okay and that's the end of round one i i feel like um and i wanted to tell giovanni this um 
he, oh Giovanni, sorry, I'm sorry. Giovanni's the one from uh, House of Muay Thai. Yeah, I, what a what a great camp, man. House yeah. of Muay Thai's fan, all their fighters. Uh, last night, I just solid, solid, just solid Muay Thai man. Fundamentals yeah. and 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 besides, uh, you know, good besides good technique, you've also got um, the 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 presence. You know yes. what I mean? Like that that Muay Thai presence of yeah. I'm calm and I'm gonna kill you. Yep, I'm a calm killer. <laughs> yes, stone faced killers. What, what was going What was going on with those ring girls, man? I have no idea. Holy cow, dude! Like. They, where do they get those get ups from, man? One chick had like the high waisted thing, the other chick had like the low waisted thing. I, I, and this is the first time that I can actually say this I wasn't paying attention to them. Oh, really? <laughs> it was because my first fight, I was you? out there, I was with my mood, and I was like, really, like, you know, I was like, oh my God, I need to really talk to you about this. You know, uh, we were just being uh, very, very, very careful, but. Nice. Great sweep. Giovanni uh, caught the caught the leg and uh, dumped yeah. dumped his opponent there. Doing powers, great execution on that. Great step through, follow through on the on the catch, and just getting that leg out from underneath him. And that's what broke the. Oh, did that break the rope? At one point, the 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 turnbuckle right the yeah broke, and so the um one of the top ropes actually started started to sag and come yeah. down. All right, so Dwayne's got his hands low, man. He, like, he'll keep he keeps dropping his hands. Yeah, he. I don't know if he's trying to protect the body or not, but you know, it's it's always one of those things where you know. What do you care about most? You better pick one because we're yeah. going all of them. Yeah. And, and I mean, he's trying to use his reach. He he kind of did a little yes. back spinning thing. Hey, and one thing Corey asked me was uh, when you know he was with me on uh, watching the fight, a back spinning uh, fist. Does that work with gloves on? Yes. Okay. Uh, it really just depends on how what what kind of contact you make with it. You know, it's that might have been the broken nose right there. Um, so looks like uh, I don't know. He's still he's still coming at it, but that was a nasty elbow that Dwayne Powers just took. Yeah. To the face. Another back Another spinning, spinning spinning back fist. Yeah, and, I mean it's to no avail though. I mean, is he looking for a highlight reel or what? Right. Mm hmm. Now the funny thing about spinning back fist technique, any any of the spin techniques to me, that is really tricky to pull off because the second you throw that spinning back fist, you are wide, wide open. Wide open, man. So it's it's always difficult to to rely on techniques like that when you're when you're when you're in the ring. Oh, nice kick right to the jaw, and <laughs> and now that, that's all we had in the fight. But I even even if uh you know even if it wasn't stopped even if there was no ko mm -hmm. i still i mean it, it was unanimous man that that uh wiley uh miller, giovanni, giovanni. Yeah, giovanni wiley miller was going to win that bout he was just way more composed he was a shorter fighter yeah but he was he was just that, that tenacious just, that pace man that just goes to show you man like if all things aren't equal then yeah. like you know for instance uh you know i don't i don't know how experienced uh powers was mm -hmm. But based on that match, I'd say that definitely uh, Giovanni had more experience than uh, Powers did. Yeah. So and the whole height thing kind of doesn't matter as much as it did if they were both equal. Yeah. And I want to make sure that we're very, very clear on that. Because sometimes people take experience as ring time. And sometimes experience can just break down to training time. You know. What do you mean? Uh, in the sense that, you know, some people will say, you know, well, he's been training for... He's been training for a year. Oh, I see what you're saying. I just had yeah. this conversation um, with uh, my Br Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys uh, that I train with. And it's like, yeah, you know, somebody who says, you know, I'm a white belt and I've been going to this uh, this this uh, gym for two years, right? Three right. years I've been. Is not the same as a white belt that has been going one year every day. Right. It's like, cool. Yeah, you, you've been you've been getting ring or uh, you've been going on the mat. What? maybe once twice a week yep compared to the guy that has been going every day like the yep. guys is, is completely just uh obsessed with brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah. guess what one year of obsession is way better than three four years of you know yeah i go yeah so it's kind of like the same thing you, you go and it doesn't mean anything yeah if you didn't put the time in the ring right uh, i mean and it's it's it's, it's mat time it's training time it's ring time you know, and a lot of those things will always play a factor into it because there, 
there are studs out there even in Muay Thai that have been training for like a year and just phenomenal like you're like you look at them and you're like wait did you say one year yes can't believe it that so and you don't have any other martial arts experience no are you sure you know, like you almost like you don't look like it. <laughs> I, I, I kind of have trouble believing you and I feel like you're lying to me right now but you know if you're telling me so you know like I said sometimes it is about the overall training time that you've put into it you know that will really show your skill and the thing about again you know you want to talk about the guys at, um, at the house of Muay Thai those guys Every time, every time Jake has posted a video, I have always seen Giovanni in it. I have always seen, um, what's his name, Nugent in it. You know, so their guys are always, they're always training. You know, so I got the connection with Jake last night, man. So we're gonna be having him on the on the show. Oh, that would be dope. Yeah, We'd love to have, e the, to have Jake on the show. Even even if it's like um, through Skype, through Skype or something. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll we'll set it up. And I would love to have that. I love that conversation. He seems like a really solid guy. Yeah, just a really good dude, man. Never had, you know, and I a fighter too. Like, yeah. like, like. There's, there's, there's three. Maybe there's three different types of guys mm -hmm. when I look at them, and I can tell they're a fighter. Doesn't mean that they have the same same personality. Doesn't mean that you know, always a stern face or yeah. always you know alpha or whatever. Um, there's three types of guys and, and and girls. Excuse me, people, right? And I I just know they're a fighter. I know they're in this game and uh you know just, i i totally totally get that like just his There's body bearing, language the yeah, body there, language there, like this guy looks like he's ready for a fight at all times there's, there's a movement and it's funny that you say that because you're right it's not necessarily about personality traits it's not necessarily about facial expressions and physical attributes there is sometimes just an energy and a vibe and a posture that the person has that you're like yeah, he knows what he's gonna do in a fight. The guy was super. The guy was super nice. He wasn't standoffish. Yeah, but at at no time did I feel safe around the guy. Like, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? That is amazing. That's a great way to describe. It. I'm sure Jake is gonna love hearing that. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So we're excited. We're we're excited, Jake. We're gonna have you on the show, man. I, I can't yeah. wait to talk to you about you know your fighters, the uh, freaking Ryan Nugent. Holy cow, man! The superhero freaking look, <laughs> guy looks like guy looks like. Remember the old Ninja Turtle toys? Yeah. He's built like a like a one of those like ripped Ninja Turtle yeah, toys. Absolutely. He, he looks like he he kind of looks like Blanca a little bit. He came out the jungle. He's <laughs> yeah. If he dyed his hair like bright orange or something, uh, cosplay baby. That's right. All right. Let me uh, let me put on the next fight. So the next fight we're gonna we're gonna take a look at. We're gonna we're going to uh, enjoy here is uh, blah, blah, blah. now the Brett Barney Moses Israel. That didn't happen. That's correct. Right. So it went straight to Dan Ms. Dan Walker, Mr. Dan Walker, and Darren Castrillon. Castrillon. All right. So let's put that up. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Uh, That's my move. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Campbell? No. I know I have it. I thought I had it. I think it's the one in oh, the middle. There it is. No, I found it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's who? Who's red? Okay, so red corner is Dan. Dan Walker. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Castrion. And Castrion is freaking from... monster, man. All right, let's let's start this fight. I'll I'll we'll comment after. Okay. All right. So there's this really rangy South African guy, just tough as nails, man. Like just that's redundant. You didn't have to say that South yeah. African. You that said it all. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it just looks like you said Castrione is blue. Uh, no, uh, yeah, Darren. Darren is blue. Darren is blue corner. All right, so Castrion just has this loping style. It, it's not an orthodox Muay Thai style. It's like no, he's definitely he's throwing haymakers. Yeah, he's throwing haymakers, and he was he's 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 happy to do that. Um, both of them are fairly inexperienced as far as Muay Thai goes. Yeah, they come from okay. So Dan Walker's out of Gold's gym, yep. and Darren Castrion's out of UFC gym. Yes. So it's the battle of the of the big box gyms. Yeah. Well, can you really call you? Well, around here you can call you can't call UFC a big box gym, but out uh, elsewhere it can be. That's true. Yeah, around here it's, it's kind of hardcore. Good leg kick from Dan. There he's showing that he's still 
he still sees his opportunities and he's still you know he's still ready, ready to engage but see the, the thing is with Darren throwing nothing but haymakers it becomes problematic because you don't want to get caught with something that's just looping out of nowhere but you all it's also hard to predict right so very hard and he, he he doesn't throw it up high he throws it from low to high yeah so it's it, it is kind of like confusing because that could easily turn into a nice body shot yeah uh they stop the fight he's got blood coming out of his nose yeah and uh looks like he he's got a broken nose now do i need to bring it back or do you know did you see where that no that broken nose happened um you can bring it back, but it was um, it was definitely earlier in the round. All right, all right. So let's watch this again. Again, Dan's doing a good job, sort of like Just covering, covering up. But it was actually right before this. Oh, it was okay. Yeah. Boom, boom. Oh, just like right. bombs being thrown. Yeah. So he's still cool there. More Not bombs. That one. No, no, it no. Nah, that was more of a forehead shot. Yeah. I mean, literally, he's. I mean, Dan is doing a good job covering up. He just must. Yeah. He must have got caught by just a. I think that, that was it. That was an uppercut. Okay, yeah. so nasty uppercut. So Darren was throwing, um, throwing his his looping from the, from low to high, um, haymaker. Yep. Haymakers, and then all of a sudden, he he's changed it up. Exactly what you should do. Yeah. Get him used to the. Side, 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 side. All of a sudden, yeah. uppercut comes. Yeah, it's all about establishing the rhythm and then breaking the pattern, right? Yeah, he, he certainly broke that pattern. Yeah. Broke that nose. Um, but, you know, good showing. I, I feel like... Um, oh, well, these are... Yeah, for, for guys that are inexperienced, again, it's, a, it's, a, it's an appropriate matchup. They're both, they're, they're both low, lower on the experience scale. They don't have a lot of Muay Thai experience. So it was a fair matchup. It just, you know, it just depended on the power you, that, you know the power became the uh, deciding factor. I wonder if Dan, it, now is this something that Dan's going to get back into the ring, you think? or I think so. I think he, you know, I think this is something that he wants for himself and he, you know, we've, we've spoken before about it and, you know, we, he knew, he knew how difficult this was going to be going into it. And Cause his fundamentals are there. I mean, he's honestly, I think if he fought another guy that was a little bit more, um, stylistically the same if you like darren was not fighting muay thai yeah <laughs> let's just put it that way he was he was in there doing some dirty boxing yeah i feel like if uh dan was going up against an, an actual a person who had a little bit more experience in thai he would have right. done better stylistically it could have been a, a more um a more back and forth matchup you know definitely but again I, I, I don't disagree with the matchup at all and I think it was you know it, it, it was fine it's again it's like you know the we'll always have those kinds of matchups in um, in sports where you have both kicking and punching right because it comes down to one's a kicker one's a puncher you know one's more Muay Thai one's more you know like there's and, and you know I, I, I don't want to get too deep into the stylistic conversation because there's like you know there are people but in the in the kickboxing and Muay Thai community, everybody knows that there's two predominant styles. There's the Dutch style and there's the Thai style. Thai style, style yep. You know, so, and on any, I, for, for those matchups, it's always 50-50, right? What rule set are you playing by and what, uh, and what does that mean? So, um, you throw a Dutch kickboxer into a Muay Thai fight where clinch and elbows are, uh, clinches and elbows are legit becomes a, a different it becomes an uphill climb for the for the dutch kickboxer but then you take a muay thai fighter and put him into glory kickboxing rules they're stifled because now they can't clinch as long now they can't throw elbows and it's a little bit more their game is a little bit more muted right so if you have somebody that's a super elbow expert and you take that away from them it kind of becomes this question mark of oh well crap now i gotta rely on everything else and then and, that, <laughs> and then that goes back uh that goes back to like the the training before the fight before that particular fight it's almost like you have to yeah 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 i'm really good at knees i'm really good at elbows mm -hmm. that's my bread and butter yep but guess what you're going into a fight with different rules yeah you train for the different rules right exactly but with but here with with um with uh dan amateur well i was gonna say what? amateur amateur <laughs> kickboxing and muay thai 
you know, there, there's there's probably no tape that you can watch of the other person. You don't know what they're going to bring yeah, to the and, table. And they're both, oh, and no, as far as Muay Thai goes. Like, nobody was going to find anything on them, you know, and yeah. nobody was going to know what we were, what anybody was going to be Surprise, surprise to everybody. Yeah. It, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it is. When you, you know, and that's, you know, there's an appeal to that to some people, like, you know, to do, like, the tournament style fights. You know, like, if you go to, like, WK Nationals. You know, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, because you're fighting again in, what, like yeah. 30 minutes? Or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, you know, kudos to, kudos to you know, Darren for, for getting that win and being able to overpower. But, you know, definitely both of them have, you know, again, you're at the beginning. So. Yeah, I think they both have. Your I, upswings I, are, your upswings are great. As far as, far as a, um, as, as far as like, you know, and I don't know what, what these guys plan on doing if they continue to go in the it looks like they're both game for another fight yeah and i would watch it you know what i mean like yeah. i i'd be excited to see this and then watch their next fight and see kind of how yeah. they've improved from that yeah it'd be kind of interesting to see them like go through like two three fights each and then all of a sudden they get rematched and like the fourth fight and it's a different like it's a different it's, fight yeah it's a different fight yeah. you know uh just depends on who's who who's who's got who's got the improvements i yeah. want i wonder if uh if darren knew to me, it looked like an advantage being very... Now, he could have gotten caught real bad, though, too. Like it, yeah. I th- I feel like if Dan was a little bit more aggressive mm-hmm. and coming in straight with yeah. with punches and, and teeps and things like that, yeah. that would have been... Or, or even leg kicks. I mean, no offense, Darren. You, you look like you missed leg day, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no offense. You, you got a big upper body, and he's yeah. using it to good effect. But I feel like if, if uh, Dan would have just nailed him in his legs and then started yeah. going straight. And-, and and I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you know, Dan was able to cover up very well on side to side. But as a coach, like, my next thing would be the second you feel something, touch your touch your glove on this side. Fire Wham! That, yeah, fire that arm. That's because it. They're, they're coming back. You're going forward. You're going to be faster than they are. So go after it. Yep. And, you know, it – there's um fundamentally sometimes beginners have a tendency to feel like you know it should be this oh, i'm gonna hit you now you get to hit then me, you hit me be, now I'm it's your hit, turn yeah, now yeah. it's my turn now it's your turn no be greedy about that that's it, right it, you make it your turn all the time that's right <laughs> yeah, as much as you as much as you possibly and, can and when your game and when your game gets really good yeah. then you start seeing people you start seeing fighters uh you know then th- th- again anybody watching this that's a fighter i get it this is very elementary here but yeah. you, you look you look at somebody's rhythm yeah you read their rhythm you read what they do yeah and then you're able like you said to make it your game yeah you're like oh he like oh darren likes to do these like one two three haymaker things cool on the second one yep i'm gonna do this yep and then when he does it again on the first one i'm gonna do this yeah and then when he does it again you know and, and then you're able to play around with the yeah. game a little bit yeah, because then that, and, and then it becomes the mental aspect of it, and how how do you maintain your composure and understanding what you need to look at when when certain things are happening in the ring, right? Again, being able to read rhythm, being able to understand the patterns that you're, the clues that your opponent is leaving behind, being able to understand that is going to be fundamental to how you can turn that around on them. But again, you know. Very appropriate matchup. They both have a great upswing in front of them as long as they keep training. And, you know, they both showed they're willing to go for it. You know, if you're willing to stay in there and, and keep at it. You yeah, know, absolutely. Hey. So let me um, let me go ahead and say what's up to Courtney Woodleaf. She's on, she's on there. She's watching. She's uh, asking if we can show the fight. I don't even know. I don't oh, even Courtney's? know. I don't, yeah, well, just show the fights that we're looking at right now. Yeah. I don't even know if that's legal, man. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get that cleared by anybody. Um, definitely for the next time we do this, I'm going to make sure that the monitor, we can we can show the fight. We don't have that for this one. Sorry about that, Courtney. Hopefully we can give you guys oh, good play-by-play. Oh, they play can't by see place. the video that we're looking they at? They can't see the video. Oh, I thought they could. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no. So we, we'll, we'll try to be a little bit more descriptive. But uh, definitely on the next one, we'll have that. Um, I would hate. I mean, I can do it. But it's going to take me like 30 minutes just to get everything set up, set it all up. So, you know, let's just keep going on the show. Um, Also, uh, apparently we're a little bit low on the thing. Don't uh, just anything. Don't talk louder. Be do what you're doing. Um, Okay. I I just I just shifted us up a little bit. Okay. So you're good to go. Um, And then what's up to Tony Alishire or Alishire? I'm not sure how to say that, but he gave us the old why. So why why back to you, my friend? 
สวัสดีครับ What is it ครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Sorry my my tie sucks <laughs> All right so we're gonna go on to the next fight Ooh I just clipped there We're gonna go on the next fight and this is Jesse Campbell versus Natasha Satnichuk I was so excited about this fight, man, and they delivered. They didn't disappoint. It was such a fun. I got to talk to Natasha after the. Oh, after awesome! Back, and um, what a what a fantastic young lady. Okay, good. She and and I'm, I told her I'm like you're getting you you got to get on the show. I got to talk to you. She's got a bright future ahead of her. Okay. And and the thing that I got from her and 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 we'll we'll post that video because we actually recorded that uh, interview with her. She um she's game. She's ready for fights. She's having a hard time getting fights, apparently. Yeah. Um, you know, she's 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 a little monster. So yeah. let's let's watch her fight, huh? Yes, please. All right. Da, 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 da. Oh, do I have the squeaky chair? You got the squeaky chair, man. Darn. I know all, right. all the all the squeaks. That's all right. We'll figure it out, guys. Hey, if, oh hey, I keep clipping. Um, if you guys want to support the show, don't forget you guys can go to patreon.com forward slash the fight game podcast. And uh, there you guys can become patrons. Make sure that you become a patron. It's like four dollars a month. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out some cool things we can do. Like, for instance, um, we've got a sort of a sort of a, a uh, what do you call it? A sponsorship with uh, Elite. Um, they they do the they do the uh, combat sports and fitness and BJJ wear. Um, they do geese. They do um, bags. They do rash guards. They do the whole nine uh, gloves and everything. So they actually sponsor a couple of fighters uh, that I know right now, and they're looking to sponsor us as well the show. So um, maybe what we can do for our patrons only. So you got to become a, a patron four dollars a month. Uh, a crappy. You know, just what was that? It's less than a Starbucks uh, a month there, but you can yes. you can get uh, in. Uh, it's less than a Grande Mocha because I know a Grande Mocha. He knows a Grande Mocha, baby. How much is a four seventy four? Something like that. There you go. Right, see? right around there, so it's cheaper than. Yeah, it's... And, and that's once a month. Like, and I drink those things, like you know. <laughs> yeah, like daily, right? Um, but yeah, so uh, go on, go on Patreon dot com forward slash the Fight Game Podcast. Become a patron, and then uh, I think we're going to start doing some giveaways um, for some gear. And uh, maybe maybe we'll make it so that you guys are the only ones that can have a voice in the show. Like like if if people uh, maybe it's like we only talk to patrons. So <laughs> if, if you want to interact with us, if you want to interact with the show, you gotta be a patron. You gotta be a patron. So go be a patron, guys. Support the DC, Maryland, and Virginia area. I'm from Virginia, so I'm a little partial. Um, <laughs> and our and our fight game that we do here, combat sports, sports. Um, okay, so let's get this fight going. All right. This is, who is it again? It's Jesse uh, Campbell and Natasha Sh- Natasha Sadichuk. Here we go. I am. So this was kind of like with with Jess. We were kind of like you have the same game plan as Mood. You're the taller fighter. Keep them at the keep her at the end of your technique because that's where you're you're gonna you're gonna have the most success. And we to- I told Jesse I said. When she comes out, she comes out guns blazing. And she's gonna put on a fast pace, so you gotta be able to be you gotta be ready for that. And she definitely delivered. Like she came out, she wanted to fire. She was comfortable, you know, like just banging it out and trying to exchange. So, I mean, Sonia Chuck is just a she's dynamite. She's dynamite in a very small package, yeah, man. Yeah, she really she really is. So she and this is a good fight though. This is a good fight because I feel like. I feel like for Jesse, yeah, Jesse probably had the harder time. Uh, yeah, she definitely had the harder time in this fight, but that's how Jesse's going to become a champion. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, I, you know, there aren't a lot of champions that have that that have made that status without going through adversity. Exactly. You know, it's the adversity that makes you the champion. So, you, with this round, it was it was crazy because we at certain points the flurries that Natasha was throwing on Jesse. Although they were landing glove side, you know, that still has an impact. And right. it started to look like she was, Jesse was starting to wilt down. Like, I was like, you know, cover up, cover up, counter, counter, counter. And we, we were telling her she's got to be the one that pushes forward, keeps her at the end of her, at the end of her techniques. It's another, it's another situation where you've got the taller fighter yes. playing like they're the shorter fighter. Right. And we were hoping that, you know, we, she could really utilize that reach and range to be able to kind of mute, um, Natasha's pace and you know her flurries because if she can't touch Jesse she can't throw those flurries and you know you start seeing you know 
whenever Jess would teep her, she was able to force her back enough to be able to re make make Natasha reset. So if she could just keep, she could have just kept that going, we would have been good. She's doing that, and Jesse was doing oh, that's the end of round one. Jesse yeah. is doing that thing that thing that you were talking about, where it's like now it's your turn. She'd let yeah. she'd let uh, Natasha throw a flurry, and, and then, then she'd counter, and then she'd counter, and it's yeah. like no, 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 no. As soon as Natasha even tries, yep, you, you got to be her. ahead of her. Yeah, stuff her, you know. Um, and especially with a taller fighter, learn how to teep. Please learn how to teep. It is right. your best friend. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there and goes I my favorite ring girl. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cruchet, you know, it's interesting to have... Cruchet is a great ref, by the way, for Muay Thai. Because he just... Chase, comes, chase the weapon Walden. Check yes, him out. Sir. And, you know, he, he comes by and checks in. He's like, you know... He was like, you know... Round one, round one's over. Going into round two, please make sure you know he he he, he makes sure that we're on top of everything. And all right, so really round two. Here we go in round two, and I kept telling Jesse, I was like, "Look, you need to you need to claim that space. You need to claim your space, and you need to keep her at the end of everything because if you don't, she's gonna she's gonna oh, um, way. start to over try to overwhelm you with pace." I mean, you know, I, I, and I remember being. You know, I remember my first fights. It looked just like this. It was like yeah. just head hunting, going right, right for the kill. After round two, it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta step my game up. That's what she's doing. Yeah, she's saying I gotta step my game up. So she's being more aggressive, but she's not cutting angles like I'd like to see. Who Jess isn't? Yeah, yeah. So you know, part of it was just you know we wanted her to focus on being able to move forward and keep her at the end. If she can keep her outside, we weren't gonna have Oi. to worry about the the what you call it. Sorry, we have to worry about the angles, and that's okay. So that was. What Crew did chase did not count that as a knockdown, and again, I'm not disagree. No, he didn't do the standing eight, right? What? He didn't count that as a knockdown, huh? Yeah, it, you know there was a push to the punch, and I I get how Natasha kind of got off balance. Now, was that to our advantage? Of course, that's that's great, and in, in because it doesn't give her a chance to um to recover from. Yeah, it. exactly. So you know it, that that to me that was that that was fine that we we did he didn't call the uh. He didn't call the uh, standing eight or whatever. See now, and now Nat Natasha's starting to slow down now. You can tell she's kind of like shot her right. wad. She's a little slower now. This is exactly where Jesse wants yeah. her. Yeah, and right you know we were we were hoping that you know we were like okay, make sure the cardio is there. As, the car as long as the cardio is there and you feel good, then you know you you have the gas tank to be able to just keep your keep keep the game in your in your favor. As an amateur. Cardio is so important because that usually wins the fight for you. Absolutely. It's the ultimate ace in the hole. Because when you can open up your game at the end and still, you know, be re be able to empty out the tank, then you're then that shows that you're you're the one that's in in better shape and you're the one that's going to have more impact. See, Natasha now at this point Natasha, like I said, she's slowing down, but she's still methodical. She's still keeping her hands up. Yeah. And now and now she's being very choosy about when she goes in. Yeah. She's starting to feel the sting in some of those punches and and that was the end of round two. That was round two, Mr. Chase Walden. Never have I seen a mohawk better presented. That very true. That's a beautiful mohawk, Chase. And there's our man, Mr. Uh, good to go, Mr. Good to go. Actually, I was I was talking about you. Yeah, I just realized. Yeah, there's good to go. <laughs> <laughs> now I was talking about our man, Mr. Coach Crew Paul Citrick. So at this point, I was telling Jess, I was like, listen to me. I was like, if you keep up what you did in round two into round three, we got this. Now, I said, you empty your freaking tank. It's the last round. This is all. There's no reason to There's no reason to hold back anything. Go ahead and throw everything that you're going to throw because you know what? This is what it. are we saving? Yeah, what are we saving it for? There's right. no round four and five. Right. All right, so we're about to start round. And they are ready to go. Oh, like, my gosh. They... <laughs> Chase is like, calm down, calm yeah, down. Okay, I didn't... Relax, ladies. I didn't say go <laughs> yet. Hold on. There was a problem with one of the judges, so they had to take a, take an extra break. Oh, yeah, a little, little... Got the runs all of a sudden, had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and, and look, I mean... Um, Natasha? Natasha is just like... Look at her. She's just like so... Relax. She's just kind of dancing around. Yeah. Jesse's relaxed. Jesse's like, all right, let's get this. Let's go. Look, she's dancing. Got Natasha yep. doing a little little jig in there. Mm -mm. All right, we're about to get going. Here we go. Now everybody's caught their breath. Round here we go. three. Fight. All right, here we go. Here 
Here we go. Counters. Good job on the counters. Natasha's really starting to throw that heat back. You know, she's trying to she's trying to get back and, you know, wants to put that pace on Jess. Oh, boy. Jess is countering with the left. She's covering pretty well. But Natasha's, you know, again. Natasha's 1-2 is no freaking joke. Though. No, not at all. Not at all. Like, you got to address that. That's real. Like, she's throwing heat with those things. That's a and problem. When, and she throws her 2-3 um, her uh, to to right kick combo is sharp like she she knows what she's doing with it and she knows where she wants to land it so she's actually able to aim for that really really well and she's doing a good you know natasha's doing a good job uh checking checking those kicks too yeah that's that's that is like that's not low level man that's not am like she, I, they're not brand 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 new but i don't yeah. expect to see a whole lot of leg checking at this right. level well you got to remember i think natasha has like six uh six to eight fights under her belt. Wow, that was fantastic. So, um, and that was that. I think that was a decision to Natasha, and uh, but Jesse, you got Jesse, you got what it takes, girl. You, well, that was an exhibition fight, so there was no result. There was no result. There was no result. One. That. Yeah, yeah. Okay, another thing, Valhalla. Please put it on the um, the thing when it's an exhibition because I didn't know that Mikey uh, and uh, Mikey Sadlowski and Walter Meza's fight was going to be exhibition. Exhibit. Why was it exhibition? By the way, uh, there were some complications. Um, behind the scenes with like medicals and things like that so i think that was what the issue was <laughs> they didn't they certainly didn't fight like it was an exhibition all right let's go to our next fight okay um but again jesse fantastic job all i gotta say is keep doing what you're doing keep training the way you're training and you're gonna you are definitely going to be able to um you know really show up in in, in these fights because you got that she's got the tools she's got yeah. a perfect body type for muay thai yeah you know she has the longer legs the shorter torso oh. and the long arms oh, so it's... it definitely works well for her if she if she just starts to concentrate on cutting those angles get the teeth yeah. kick down make sure that you know her, she's she's keeping the distance so that yeah. she can do the damage from far away yeah because natasha's game was getting well you would think i i think natasha's game would have been better if I'd seen more clinching, more knees, you know, more that. Right. She, I, it, it was, just, but I think the the challenge was, and I know that was part of what they were thinking, especially in the earl in the earlier earlier part of the first round. You saw that she really was trying to engage in that clinch. The problem was with her with with Natasha. She was not going to be able to not take damage um, on the way in. Coming in, there's going you're going to have to pay something to be able to get in, and. You know, we like to clinch too, so it's that's like, true. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Not like we're slouching that gate in no, that area. So that's true. That's true. Know, what that, did you, What did you tell Jesse uh, af after this fight? Like, or what is the game plan for her? For her, I know she's going to fight again. What's sure. her What's her next move as far as in training? As far as training goes, it really is like you know solidifying all your fundamentals, because we're we're not a school that looks to give you the next flashy move or anything like that or the next. Technic, technical sequence or anything like that we really want to make sure that your fundamentals are shored up so that you know no matter who you face if you face them with your fundamentals you can still come out on top like one of my favorite fighters Yodson Klai everybody knows what he's going to do he's going to box and he's going to throw a left kick he's yep. going to box and you know it's coming kick. yeah you know it's coming but you know do you want that hospital bill for you know the traumatized arm you know for for the broken right arm or whatever he hits again what it reminds it takes me back to bjj where you know when you're in there rolling you're doing free roll or whatever mm -hmm. you know all the guys you've you've trained with them you know yeah. you know oh that guy's a spider guard guy you yeah. know he like or he likes to triangle yeah and yet you you keep getting caught yeah, in the same in move. those things yeah. why because they lock down they put you where they want you yep no matter Absolutely. what and you know it, whether it's bjj or whether it's muay thai or any other any other combat sport the fundamentals are the ones that are going to get you the uh, the majority of the time uh you know strong comprehension of fundamentals will always beat you know like strength and you know muscle or whatever yeah yeah like like the what would i call the soft the soft skills of you know being taller yeah or being stronger or being faster it's yeah. like that's great can you put me in a bad position yeah exactly and you know who's one of the one of, and one of my, the reason why he's one of my favorite favorite grapplers is um cron gracie because yeah if you watch his um bjj matches they're not he doesn't do anything flashy 
it's all basic fundamentals right it just applied phenomenally well yeah he just he knows it inside and out he knows exactly yeah. how to get you there yeah and it's like he'll in, he'll tell you he'll be like hey man i'm about to arm bar you <laughs> oh no you're not yeah and then same thing you look at guys like marcelo garcia i love marcelo garcia but personally i'm more of a cron i i i, I like cron a little bit more they, they tell me um at my gym they say you got to start watching marcelo garcia stuff because Apparently, his style and his body type are would be good for for my game. Yes, I I, I would agree with You'd that. You'd see that absolutely. I, I, Marcelo Garcia was like a huge inspiration for me at one point when I when I would train in grappling. Just like, but the and I, and you know I never got to continue. I, I didn't continue my grappling training, and I still roll from time to time. Sure, but it's not like I train in BJJ very well, very often. Um, but. You look at his look. Look at all of his Abu Dhabi Combat Club matches. Like mm-hmm. there, if he gets on your back, boy, there's a ninety nine point eight percent chance that he is choking you out. <laughs> you're going. You're going. Bye bye. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Pretty much. All right. But anyway, sorry. No, no, no. no that, was, that was great. That was great. Um, let's let's go to the next fight. Uh, very very exciting fight, guys. This is uh, Ryan Bal Balinfi. Balinfi. I always want to call him Bal Balinfi. Balinfi versus Luke Hunsaker. Yeah, another House of Muay Thai guy. All right. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. These guys were gangster because they were opted for no gear, full rules. Elbows and knees. Let it all hang out. I mean, right away, you can see there's a difference in muscle. Yeah. Uh Ryan is Ryan, thicker. Ryan is just a he's like a uh, he's a he's a monster. He's yeah. just very muscular. Got a big ass beard. That that's always a, I think that's a plus 5. Yeah. That's a plus 5 right there yeah. advantage. He's throwing heat with those punches, man. And and it looks like his game is just let me clinch, let me clinch up with you. And Ryan's just like El- oh, elbows on the yeah, inside. Good elbow on the inside. Nasty. Love that. Nasty. And I mean, he's got good he's got a good clinch game too. I mean, he's he doesn't have the uh, the hand on the back of the you know like the the crown yeah. of the head thing, but it's not stopping him. He's 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 yeah. oh, oh oh gave him a nice piece right there. So yeah, Ryan just uh, I gotta I gotta back that up because I think that was a right straight. Yeah, right cross. Let's see here. Yep, that's what it was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just Great. Make, make, interesting exchange like right off of the break from the clinch right like you know they got clinched up they got tied up a little bit ryan created that space and just fired that rocket right into right into the jaw i wonder if uh uh i wonder if uh what is it luke i wonder if luke um was just getting used to uh ryan being so close <sighs> right and being like oh, oh okay he's a close guy yeah I'm a taller fighter. Maybe yeah. maybe Luke's like I'm a taller fighter. Maybe I'll dominate. So he's right. he's he's okay with Ryan backing up. Yeah, but that was kind of a mistake. Yeah, well, it's hard, right? Because you know, you, you, what knocks you out? It's always the one that you didn't see coming, right? Yeah, that's right. So he, he you got com- you get comfortable trying to th- thinking that you know, oh, this isn't going to come, and that's when it does come. Um, I think with you know. With with what was going on, it, it's hard to not advocate for protect yourself at all times. Make sure your hands are always up because something's coming. And if you you know the thirty seconds before that right hand came out, you knew what was happening. It was you know Ryan was coming forward and he was coming for you. So he was definitely the more aggressive fighter. Yeah, definitely was. And and I wonder right like if you should if that should just be your game plan with a short three two minute round deal should you be balls to the wall right out of the gate if you're at this level because i because i feel like yeah. at, at, i feel like at uh you know in the amateur level that that can fly obviously in the pro level that doesn't fly because they're waiting for somebody to charge in like a yeah like a bull but in this in this game it's like let me overwhelm you yeah um you know and and it really again you have to th- you ha- and this is where matchmaking really comes into play right appropriate matchmaking um so a guy like ryan who comes in hot and heavy like you know with aggression sometimes 
those guys can get caught by the by the technician who is looking for the guy to keep coming in and i'm gonna cut this angle and pop you like, that's it every time you don't see every time you try to rush in or you have the guys that like you know I want you to put weight on your lead leg so that when I crush it with my leg kick, then you'll know that you can't just keep bum rushing me. Yeah, well, you can. Yeah, you, like you physically you'll, can't be. You just a, can't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think you know it's a pro again. It's appropriate matchmaking, but at the same time, it's also that training time, skill level versus ring time, and you know overall ring time and you know whatever sparring time. It, it it really just breaks down to who's gonna have a better night that night. So that was an unpredictable fight for me because I didn't know if Huntsacker was gonna be able to use his range. And because he is he's quite a bit taller, he does have yeah. a, a much much longer reach than yeah. uh, Ryan did. Yeah, and the strength advantage definitely came in to, to to Ryan's advantage. You know, the power that he's got in those hands—they're like freaking bricks, apparently. Yeah, and and and, and, and the power in in being able to kind of control where. He where goes, yeah. yeah, where it happens. Because he, like right out of the break, he's got him up against the ropes mm -hmm. and he's playing, he's playing some nasty. I wonder if that, oh man, that elbow must have woke him up. Like he yeah. must have been like, oh, hello. Yeah. I mean, that's hard when you, you know, for some, and that's, that's, that's the hardest part, right? Because some guys, they don't wake up in a fight until you hit them with a good shot. And I'm like, dude, if you wait for the good shot, that shot might be the best shot of the night and you go down from it. That'll be shot of the night, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so... Um, and I don't know if Ryan's like that, but, you know, at the end of the day... It was a good showing. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a good showing. That, and that's the thing. That's the that's the thing, um, you guys out there, you know, in the D.C. metro area, check out Valhalla. Like, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of great Muay Thai-only promotions out there. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere, really, here in the States, but especially in the D.C., uh, Maryland, Virginia area, it's like, go go to Valhalla... I know you. I know you like uh, boxing. I know you like MMA. Yeah. But check out Muay Thai, man. Especially the the talent. How much time is actually spent training people? People training in in this art form. Yeah. You're gonna see clinics put. I saw clinics being put on in an in an amateur amateur uh, promotion. I couldn't believe it. I was like, Yeah. There's actually technicians. Yeah. Happening in the amateur leagues, man. Absolutely, man. They're coming up all the time, and you know, they you have you have. Just this area alone has so many great gyms that have people with real knowledge in, you know, in striking and in Muay Thai that it's, it's very competitive in the sense that, you know, we all know a lot of the same things and we all can utilize a lot of the same fundamentals. So, you know, it just really depends on, you know, who's doing what and when. Right. It's just like any other sport. Like you think, you think of football. The guys, there's always going to be the same number of guys on the field. There's only the same. There's always going to be the same number of plays that you can do, based on the rule set. So, what's different? Well, the difference is some. There are some teams that have bigger linemen. Some people that have better quarterbacks. Some yeah. teams that have better quarterbacks. Some some like the passing game. Some like the rushing yeah. game. I so mean, it's you all never about, know. Yeah, it's all about that whole diversity of your portfolio. What your toolbox has in it, you know. Are you a tall fighter that can fight close, or are you a, lo a short fighter that can fight long? You know. Yeah. Or are you, or are you pretty much orthodox in the fact that you're a short fighter, and I yeah. know you're coming in close because that's how you play your game. Yeah. Are you a tall fighter that as soon as I get close, you, you don't even know what to do with me? Yeah. Yeah. So you never know, and it's all about the fight, and that's what I love about following the fight game. Yes. Is is that you get to see all the different you know people that are that make up this game. You, I, yeah. I want to be. I want freaking play. Remember baseball cards? Yeah. <laughs> I want Muay Thai cards. I want MMA cards. You know what I mean? I want to be able to like collect and be like, oh, yeah, look at the stats on this one. You know what I mean? You know, I had a 1991 Michael Jordan card. What? Yeah. I don't know where that is now. but that You was... better find that. I know, right? <laughs> Let's go to the next fight, my man. Um, yes, very excited about this one, okay? We talked about uh, the fact that neither one of these young ladies were smiling in their fight picks yeah they were pretty angry looking yeah and i, I like i hope that was going to be a promise yeah of the fight to come yeah and it was yeah um this, this is this is what happens when two tornadoes collide i'm telling you man two 105 pound tornadoes very very tiny and very ferocious we got crystal heisey versus uh, maria kelly 
Uh, of course, Crystal Heisey out of Lotus Thai Boxing, a uh, staple here in Muay Thai in uh, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And uh, where's uh, Maria's from No Excuses Muay Thai, which I believe is out of PA. I think so. Either PA or Delaware. I can't remember. But they're, they, they traveled down here to put on a good show, and that's what they did. So yeah. let's, uh, let me put that fight on. Good on them. All right, here we go. Round one. I mean, both fight both fighters very game. Yeah. I gave uh, Crystal a hug afterwards, and, and you know, to congratulate. Did you get blood her. on you? I got blood. I couldn't believe how how muscular she was. I mean, she yeah. was just so ready. Like her body was so ready for this fight. And she comes out blazing. Yep. Maria, right away, tries to tries clinch to with counter. her. Yeah. Oh, and a, and a beautiful dump. I mean, yeah. spun her and dumped her, okay? Crystal's, you can tell Crystal's been doing Muay Thai yeah. for a while. <laughs> well, that was the thing, right? We we were hoping that we could capitalize on her strength and being able to unbalance uh, Maria. Definitely, if you're looking at, if you're looking as far as like who's stronger, Crystal looks like the stronger fighter. Yeah. Just from a muscular, muscularity yeah standpoint but she's also she's definitely more game too she's she's more aggressive yeah and you know what it's funny because i sparred i sparred um with crystal for a little bit just to kind of test her out and see where where she was at and i was like man she is she's throwing some serious heat at me i was like are you controlling yourself and she was like yeah and i was <laughs> like controlling yourself it doesn't really feel like it but you know okay and maria tries to come in with a uh she she does a uh a kick to the to the ribs, a nice yeah. kick to the ribs, and then a spinning back fist to no avail. That just and that not- just puts her into clinch, and that's again, that's you know, that's the opening that that sometimes creates, right? That's what happens. I mean, and, and it looks like Maria is, is catching uh, Crystal a little bit with some some of the her yeah. punching, but it just goes right back into a clinch. Yeah, and 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 a clinch is not where Maria wants to be here. Yeah, you know, it's funny because, like, you know, she was grabbing the rope a little bit, and I, I can understand why that happens. But, you know, Crystal was still able to turn her and be able to move her around where she wanted her to be. And just, I, I'm just so impressed with Crystal's ability to turn and dump. You know, she just, she's got that, that half moon. Yeah. Uh, so for her, like, the, 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 her clinch game is really interesting in that sense that, you know, she, really looks for that ability to be able to throw throw the person down all right so there and so i think this is where i believe they they clashed at one point headbutted each other and yeah so uh, <clears throat> They're they're uh, with the, they're with at, at their corners right now, and uh, we can't talk because uh, my favorite ring girl is on again. All right, she's gone. All right, now we can talk. Um, yeah, it looks it looks to me that um, I mean Crystal definitely. If if this fight goes the full distance, Crystal's gonna win. Definitely gonna win that first round. Yeah, Maria looks like she got a talking to. Yeah, she looks like she's she's in the game now. I don't know what her coach said to her, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta wake up. I think, yeah, I, yeah and and, I'm, and if I remember correctly, she does for the second round. So yeah. here we go, round two, and they're going. <laughs> I mean, just a lot of activity and just like a lot of you know. Right now they're in the clinch, but and she's really active with those knees. She's she's very uh, multiple focused on those knees. Like she she doesn't just throw one, which is great. Yeah, you know, so that also that also helps her case out. Every time she clinches uh, with Crystal, if she has the opportunity to throw a knee, she's throwing two, three, and she'll just keep going with that same leg if she want, you know, if she can. A lot of times in these amateur fights, I'm always worried about wasted, wasted uh, energy, wasted effort. But right. I'm not seeing really any wasted energy here. Not really, but uh, you know, again, their technique is a little bit wider than I would like it to be for both of them. You know, they're swinging a little bit wide. I'd like to see them control that a little bit better. But at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, they're they they know where they're trying to hit and they're trying to get there. Right. Um, you know, adrenaline is a hell of a thing. So when you start 
when you start seeing that when you're when you're in it you know you don't know whether it's you know is it strength or is it adrenaline that's doing it right you know right exactly yeah. and it's hard to rely back on your fundamental training that's why and this is this is why we tell people you need to throw a hundred thousand punches a hundred thousand jabs before you even start to really feel like you have some sort of control and mastery over that jab right you know and it's just the numbers right being able to throw the numbers and knowing when to you know when to throw it I mean, look at the knees that they're throwing. They're just throwing like they. they I, I got to give credit to both of them because they're both throwing body knees with the hips in. Their their torsos are nice and you know nice and framed. They're not they're not pulling back and leaning back like some fighters do. You know what I'm not seeing um, that I, that I'm happy that I'm not seeing in this mm. fight. Uh, you know when when uh, somebody will throw a, a punch or a kick and then they'll go sideways. Mm -hmm. They'll 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 blade out with their bodies. Yeah. Here, what we're seeing is. They're like you said. They're staying squared up with each other, which is where you want to be in Muay Thai. You want to be able yeah. to throw everything. Yeah. You don't want to be on the side because, God forbid, you get clinched up and you're sideways, and then all they're doing is just throwing nasty knees to your to your legs, to your belly. Yeah, legs, belly, kidneys, and you're just getting nailed all over the place. It is not a fun situation whatsoever. <laughs> These young ladies aren't doing that. These young ladies are, um, you know, they're staying square with each other. They're throwing, and like you said, they 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 could definitely tighten their game up but again this they're is showing good fundamentals it, good fundamentals for an amateur you know come yeah. on so they're getting they're getting their talkings too yeah and by the way this is crystal's first fight and i i, I know this i know marie's got a few more fights under her belt yeah i talked i talked to her coach and he told me that she's got some smokers she's yeah. got a couple of fights smokers are so valuable I think it is too. I think it's a great starting point to, you know, even below amateur competition so that you realize what it's like to be in a ring, to have a crowd, even if it's a small one. But this place was packed, dude. They had every seat filled. From At one point, I saw every seat filled. I was so amazed at how well they managed it and how well it came off. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh, and she gets dumped again. Maria got dumped great by dump. Crystal. That was a really good dump. Now, although Crystal didn't... Um, sweep for the leg i think it's still counted as a good sweep because she was able to unbalance her and that's really what they were looking for in the uh in the clinch as a as a valid as a valid uh as a valid sweep <laughs> she's she's starting to throw uh some of those haymakers we were talking about before yeah exactly crystal's like you know what now i'm gonna dirty box you yeah all right clinch back up again and knee 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 oh crystal good, miss on, good making her miss on the knee and then turning her and then now what I know that the coaches were yelling at her for was for her to attack on that on, whenever she would turn her. They were, I know they were yelling for her to attack. Crystal. Yeah, because they wanted her to maintain the momentum. You, you turned her, you might as well just start kneeing her right away. Don't, don't wait, don't wait. You know. <coughs> part, oh. And, uh, and that was just a stumble on uh, Maria's part. Maria stumbled yeah. Down, yeah. down to her knees, and of course, we don't want to see anything, any nasty knees from <laughs> on a downed opponent. Yeah. So they, so... uh Crew Chase uh, separated and brought them back together. And we did offer no elbows, but knees to the head were going to be okay. Or was that Jesse's fight? I know Jesse's fight, we had that. No elbows, but knees to the head were okay. Mm, mm -mm. God, which is worse? I, have, I, don't, I, I don't know if I want to take knees to the head. I really don't either. Maria's starting to use her reach advantage a little bit. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that... Um, it, again, when you have the taller fighter using that reach, how do you get around the shorter per? How do you get around the shorter person who's just trying to bully through right. any of your reach game? Right. Um, I think for Crystal, she she really wanted that body shot, and I think that was really important for her. So. Was she she trying to do like a one hitter quitter on that body? I don't know. If she's trying to do a one hitter quitter, but she definitely wanted to make sure that she was able to hit that body and like. You know, the more damage you take to the body, the more it wears down on your cardio. Well, I was I was explaining to uh, my buddy who was with me that every time Crystal dumped uh, Maria, mm -hmm. just imagine just imagine it's a lot like in Street Fighter. Oh my God! You just have to get up again. And just yeah, <laughs> you remember in Street Fighter when you would throw somebody and it'd be like their their health bar would go. Zzz. Yep. That's what it. That's what it feels like to get dumped in a real fight. It's like you get dumped and you think, oh, they just fall down. No big deal. Get back up. No, no, no. Getting back up takes so much energy after that. Yeah, it, and you're not to mention um, what it, it demoralizes you too. Yeah, 
It is really, really tough, especially when you get dumped that many times. And just having to get up is just frustrating at that point because then you, like, it gets – for some people, it'll get in your head. Like, you know, oh, my God, don't get dumb, don't get dumb, don't get dumb. And then you stop paying attention to everything else about your game and you get caught with something else and then you get dumped, you know, so. Yeah, it just – yeah, it, don't get don't get caught up in what happens in the fight. Yeah. Get caught up in your game. Stay yeah, in your game. Absolutely. And uh, – and you know, and the other thing is, uh, kudos to them for not. They don't. They didn't have any any uh, fans. I don't think they had very any fans or very few fans at at this event. I mean, this was definitely a Lotus house as yeah. far as the fans go. Because every time a Lotus uh, a fighter came out, it was just like you couldn't even hear yourself talking. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, kudos kudos to uh, No Excuses Jim Absolutely. for coming out there and fighting this match. And that's the win for uh, Crystal Heisey out of Lotus Thai Boxing. Fruit Punch. <laughs> that was a fantastic fight, man. Yeah. That was enjoyable. And, that you know, that's the thing. It's one thing for, you know, fighters. You're not thinking about the crowd for the most part. You're just thinking about going in there and surviving and, and winning. That's what yeah. you're thinking about. But, you know, me being me being a spectator, you weren't a spectator. You were you were pretty much ringside for all these. Yeah. Me being a spectator, I'm also I'm also worried about, is this going to be boring? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, it's so selfish, but you got, you know, on the promoters are definitely thinking that too. It's like, yeah, did we, maybe. did we put together good fights so that when we do this again, people are going to be excited about it. And mm. let me tell you something, Valhalla, good job, man. You guys put on well done. Fantastic fights. Um, all right, cool. So the next match we got going on here, Courtney, I know you've been waiting for this. We're going to talk about your match against Miss uh, co-main event, co-main event here. We've got uh, Courtney Woodleaf uh, from MMA Institute. Fighting uh, Lotus Thai Boxing Zone, Leah Marie. Yep. All right, let's watch it. All right, here we go. And of course, the uh, the fight starts, and it is a battle right right out of yeah, the gate. Yeah, they just go right into the clinch, looking for that strength advantage. That's so interesting. Like some, do you? Some of the fights they start off, uh, you know, kind of like with the ranging and trying to figure each other out. But most of these amateur fights, you're gonna get your your money's worth. They're just gonna come in guns blazing. Yeah, it's a battle. You know, it really is. It really is about like you know who can impose their will and you know how well you how well you really practice your game. Okay, so Courtney's got fantastic clinch abilities here she's yeah she's keep she's keeping leah just in a really nasty spot yeah. every time she clinches with her she's like got an elbow in leah's in leah's grill yeah and then there's and then see here it goes again yep she's got her nice and tight she's got her head up and she's kneeing yeah she's able to get her hip out and throw knees that that short hip jerk motion that she does to oh <laughs> and there was a little okay so uh, yeah, Courtney threw a little bit of a nasty uh, after the after the referee breakup. Breakup. She threw a nice little hook there. Didn't do anything, but you know, it, it's one of those like demoralizers. Yeah. And Leah's game here looks to be clinching up as well. I'm not sure if that's just kind of training going out the window in a real fight or no. We wanted her to be in the clinch, but we also wanted her to exercise her range a little bit. Because she does have ha, does have really good kicks, um, we just wanted to make sure we just wanted her to be able to, you know. A lot of times it's it's about be if you're in your end. That was a great knee by that Leah. That was a right, beautiful knee. And she 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 turned Courtney and gave her a knee. It was it was it was yeah. pretty nice. But but Courtney just it it didn't look like it faced her though. She she has good composure. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Definitely, yeah. And I mean, with Rick's Rick's fighters, they're always they're always going to be like that. They're always going to have that good composure. You know those. what I you know what I call Rick's gym? I don't call it MMA Institute. I call it the Beast Factory. Yeah, definitely. So that was the end of round one, and looks like uh, Rick Humphreys is cornering Leah. Yeah, it was Rick and the John that were in her corner for um, for this fight. How can you go wrong? You got Rick Humphreys uh, cornering you. Come on. Guys, that's a superhero right there. Dude, so much knowledge, so much experience, and, like, you know, great analysis of what's going on. So, 
very composed too. Like the one thing I like about Rick is that he's mild mannered. You know what I mean? Like he he doesn't let emotions get in the way of anything, and I and I feel like he brings that calming nature to his fighters as well. Yeah, when it's time to fight, yeah, absolutely. You know, he's he's not in there. He's screaming at you. He's he's like, you know, no worries. You know, you're gonna, yep. you got this. You know. Yes. All right, round two started, and we've got a very composed start, and yeah. right back into some ferocity. Yeah. Good clinch attempt by Leah, getting some good knees in there. She did eat a few um, coming in there. Uh, yep. Courtney was definitely giving her the business, uh, giving her a couple of two pieces. Uh, yep. And then, and then, like you said, Leah's like, all right, let me clinch with you. Leah's coming in with her head down. That's generally... Frowned upon. Yeah, that's not a good thing. That's definitely something I would want, want to make sure that we change up on Leah. Um, no. I don't like when her head was down. Yeah. Chin down. Chin down's fine, yeah. but her, she was looking like down at the floor. That's, yeah. a, that's a different story. Absolutely. Okay, so she's throwing knees. I mean, it, like you said, you know, they... They get they get a couple of good hits and then and then oh wow I'm I'm in a fight let me right. let me turn this on. Courtney just threw a wow that was a that was a, na- a walloping right hand yeah if boy. that if that right hand landed oh and that and that and this is where we start seeing knees Courtney starts throwing some vicious knees she's got Leah's head way down yeah and she's throwing these nasty knees to uh to Leah's uh so the problem orbital <laughs> yeah the problem is that Leah's still hit, clinching. Hit, hit, still hanging on with that right arm and what she needs to do is let, let it go. go just let it go yeah yeah if you're in a bad position there's no way you're gonna be able to fix that at this point you yeah you, you really need to just disengage and then bring it back to where where you need to be yep both fighters look kind of no i'm not gonna say they're gas. well leah might be gassed yeah. they're definitely tired courtney's tired and but she looks like she still has the composure she's still looking straight yeah straight at her Good Leah's knee. good knee from Leah. Another good knee. Nice, the, one of those straight knees right at, right into the solar plexus. Yeah. That's the end of round two. So we are yep. going to see a round three here. There he goes. Yeah, see that, my man Rick Humphreys telling her breathe, relax. You got this fight. You're doing a great job. Make sure you... And I can tell he's like angles. He told her something with kick. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing the, the arm the arm motion for... Yeah. Bring those kicks in. Chop down on the neck kind That's of right. deal. That ring girl, if there was such a thing as a ring girl enthusiasm award, she gets it. She was like just bouncing around the ring, getting people excited. You need that. You know... It's interesting. It's like having cheerleaders in a game. Yeah. That's really, that's what they're supposed to do is get the crowd amped up. All right. We're about to uh, have the start of round three, final round. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Judge, judge, judge. Fight. All right. So we, yeah. And Cordy so comes right in with a flying teep kick, I guess. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a slide in. And she's closing that distance hard. Yeah, Leah's not even looking at her. Yeah. She's looking down. Oh, but Leah go. throws a head kick <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah, and that's the thing with Leah is that she does have those really good head kicks. She just needs to get her range going. And the thing about her is that, you know, it's right now, it's what she's having the most problems with is establishing her range. Because, um, is it Candace? No, Courtney. Courtney. Courtney is, you know, closing distance really well by throwing slide techniques. So she'll pick up her leg and slide forward and like almost like push in. Oh, okay. So what was that? So it looked like uh, Leah did a teep kick and knocked down. Uh, yeah, Cor- knocked Courtney down. Yeah. But Courtney's still game. Yeah, s- still coming in. Okay, some nice knees, man. Some nice yeah. combination knees there from from Leah. Yeah. And so you see how Courtney's trying to grab for the lower waist. Yes. And that's to try to pull Leah's hips in because she's having trouble controlling them now. When we, when we talked to uh, Courtney um, after after the match, she said that that's something that she's going to work on mm-hmm. is keeping her head up during those clinch exchanges. Yeah. And I think that's what she was talking about when she mentioned that. 
she's because yeah. she seemed disappointed that was pretty much the only thing she was disappointed about yeah and she's really got not much to be disappointed about courtney was freaking i'm very impressed with her performance yeah yeah so there she goes again with uh keeping keeping leah's hips uh from, yeah, she's, from being able to do anything. Yeah, and she's trying to tie her head up, and Leah's just holding on with that arm to try and, you know. Hands are coming down, man. They, these guys, they're going the distance. They're putting it all, leaving yeah, it in the ring there. Absolutely. And that's the end. And that's the end. Arms up, raised in victory. I guess Courtney, Courtney was like, yeah, that's mine. That's mine, biatch. There we go. There's the arm from uh, from Leah. Yep. And it looks like uh, looks like Courtney's uh, Courtney's corner is very very happy with that performance as well. Yep. Okay. It look, it looks like uh, Ajan Scott Howard is looking at her face and saying, "Well, we've got a little." Look, she might have been showing from from those knees. It had to be those knees to the face. Yeah bruised uh leah up a little bit the, I, i'll tell you what that probably if anything those those knees to the face was probably that was the nastiest place yeah. for leah i think because you know when you think about a fight what are the thing what are the things that you remember from the fight like the o the o sh moments yeah that that i felt really i was uh, i was afraid of that moment for yeah i've been in that position in my amateur fight not Where, a fun place to be. Not a good place to be, man. And we're talking about two two fight camps that are that are um, they're they're uh, sister gems to one another. The, yeah. The, there's no bad blood between either one of these Never. fighters. Not with Coach Rick. These are these are fighters that actually fight with each other. Like you know, Lotus and Disciple will go down to MMA Institute. MMA Institute will come up this way. Yeah. And, you know, so these guys, they there's no bad blood, but boy, yeah. I tell you what, that was a hell of a fight. That was a hell of a fight. I mean, you want to talk about just like constant action and just like trying to really get it? Definitely, they 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 went for it. So you can't you can't fault them for that. So many so many good fights, and I, I mean, at the end of this, we'll talk about what you, what you think was the fight of the night. But that was that was great. That was a, definitely a contender for fight of the night. I re, I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that fight. Yes, and I want to see more from these. I hope that Leah gets back in there. And I, and talking to Courtney, she's raring to go. She's ready for her next fight. So. I bet. Yeah, especially coming off of a win like that, you you're always like, yeah, hell yeah. You're on a high. You're on a high. You're ready for the next one. So you just got to keep your head in the game and say, okay, well, I won the last one, but that's not my attitude going to the next one. Yeah, you you got to always be the underdog. Always the underdog. All right, let's watch the last fight. You ready for this? Main event. Main event. This is Mikey Sadlowski from Chukti. Athletics versus Walter Meza from, of course, Lotus Thai Boxing. That's right. All right, let's do it. And here we go. Round one. Fight. All righty, you can see the difference in um, high level, like people that have a lot more experience and training is the... The relaxation at the start. See, they're starting on that slower tie pace where they're trying to measure each other out and trying to see where the other's at. They realize that this isn't going to be, you know, a lucky a lucky punch is not going to do it. A lucky kick, a lucky knee. This is yeah. there's no luck here. This is all technical work here. These yeah. guys are these guys are just punching their clock, man. They're they a hey, hey, boss. I'm ready. Boom. And we're seeing some fantastic leg kicks. Great right out combination of the work from both fighters. Walter coming in heavy with the leg kicks, and his opponent's just coming back. Good, good fire back, and being able to flow a combination on a counter. And look how many t already I'm counting about four different changes in angle. Yeah. Four different changes in, in uh, where where they're coming. You're seeing some half moons going on. Nice yeah. leg leg check there. And 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 the the the. The amount of power in these kicks, you guys had to be there to see how much power explodes, you know, and it's out of nowhere. It's like these guys calm, yeah. calm, 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 and then all of a sudden a shotgun just yeah. blast. The lighter guys are always, you know, going to be the more explosive guys, you know. It's very rare for that to find in the heavier weight classes if you're going anywhere above like 85, you know. 
just really it, walter's got it? his hands low what, what, what about that so i'm okay with the low hands as out of range but when you get my whole thing is if you look his hands do come up the closer that they get oh i see yeah so that's as right. they get closer to contact and that's just walter being uh comfortable with his range and understanding how far he needs to be and being able to read his opponent's range now i'm not quite sure if walter has walter's shorter but i don't know if his reach is any shorter because he has very long arms yeah, I don't know if there was a huge reach def de deficiency for either one of them. Like, if the other dude had longer legs, Walter may have had longer arms, you know, so it's not... Yeah, it's, it, it's it, looks like, it looks like a wash either way. Yeah. And, of course, they're both composed. They're just kind of chilling on the, on the side there. Yep. I do think it's kind of gangster when people do the no chair in the corner. Oh, yeah. I'm always big. I, I like having the chair, but, you know, sometimes guys be like, oh, I don't want the chair. I'm like, all right, cool. If you don't want the stools, there, there, there won't be a stool. I personally, don't, I personally don't like the chair myself because uh, I always feel like. It's energy to get up and out. Yeah, out well, yeah. yeah and, and also just mental energy. Like, I, I want to feel like I'm still fighting even when I'm not fighting. You know what I mean? That's fair. Because I feel like when I sit down, I'm like, fight's over, you know, mm. for me in my mind. I, I don't want to feel that way. Okay. I'm not saying I'm a gangster. It doesn't mean I'm going to be, you know, it doesn't mean my fight's going to be good, but that's just a mentality thing for me. All right, let, round two. And we're seeing. So now Mikey's trying to change the pace by putting a little bit more rhythm into his. Uh, into his step, so he's changing the rhythm up a little bit. Yes. And Walter's trying to recover. Oh, Gets my a gosh. great counter leg kick that knocks his legs, knocks Mikey's legs out from underneath him. Yeah. My, I mean, Mikey was, it looks like, it looks to me that Walter is just like, yeah, F your faster pace, okay? Yeah. My pace is going to be this. This is how we're going to fight. Yeah. Nice teep kicks from uh, Sedlowski. Yeah. Good combination work on the kicks. Try oh. to find, you know, the, uh, Trying to find the good combinations Ooh. there. Oh, na nasty kick to the ribs. Uh, Sadlowski just launched a nice one. Yeah. Walter took it in stride, though. Walter's not going to... He's not getting baited. Yeah. And that shows a lot of experience and a lot of acumen with, like, not being not being baited into anything. And knowing when, you know, if there's trouble, how to get out of it and how to move around from it. Oh, beautiful. So Great fake, fake high kick to the hook double hook combination. And it landed too, baby. Yeah, it that did. landed. I mean, that woke Sadlowski up a little bit too. Yeah. Leg kicks. I mean, and, and it, it's just like at no, this is a second round pace. This is how it should be in Muay Thai. Second yeah. round pace is pick it up. Pick it up, man. You're gonna start seeing four, five, six uh, combinations. Yeah. Just blasts. You know, not not this like sort of like one hit, maybe two hits. It's like if I'm coming in, I'm coming in hot and heavy. Yeah. Good teep kick from uh, Sedlowski. He is a bit taller, so he is trying to keep that range uh, a little bit further away. Yeah. And that's the hard thing to do with Walter, you know, just from a, from the standpoint of he knows what he's doing. He knows how to get around those things. And he knows how to bait certain techniques out of you so that it all of a sudden negates your reach. Okay, that's the end of round two. At the end there, um, Sedlowski... It looked like he was trying to um, really push Walter into the into the ring mm -hmm. and try to clinch with him. Yeah, Walter was having none of it. Yeah, and then Walter ends up. Um, it looked like Walter was like, "Yeah, come on in," but then uh, then Mikey just kind of jumped right out. So yeah, I, I don't know if that was. It, it looked like it looked like uh, Sadlowski, Walter, right? Yeah, well, no, no. Um, Mikey, right? Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, it looked like Mikey Sadlowski probably, should, in my opinion, he should have stayed in a little bit close. He should have jumped out of that because he had Walter up against the ring. Right. So, and, and yeah, no, I, 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 I can agree with that to a certain extent. It just really depends on what you're reading in the ring, right? Sometimes if you feel the counter coming, you, you have to get out of the way and make sure that you're not, you're keeping yourself safe. safe, self safe. That's why I'm saying, you know, purely my opinion, I wasn't yeah. in there and I wasn't. You know, I, these guys in the ring, they know better yeah. than some spectator, some a-hole named Leo. <laughs> and that's the hug. And Final round. Time to fight. There we go. Make it interesting. And again, this was an exhibition. This was an exhibition uh, because of uh, medical issues, but they still fought like it was not an exhibition, like somebody was going to get a W at the end of this. Yeah. 
Nice fake from Walter. Yeah. Faked the knee, went straight to... I like that. He, he, he's got a lot of low, high... Yeah, he changes levels often, which is really great for him. So you can notice he started stepping some of his footwork just to make sure that, you know, Mikey's on the gas on. Is he going to attack the body? Is he going to attack the legs? Is he going to attack my face? You just don't know. Yeah. You just don't know. Mikey's showing good composure. I'm not sure if anybody's gassed. I mean, Mikey's mouth is open, but then again, it is annoying with those damn uh, mouthpieces. Yes. Sometimes, you know, the breathing is very, it's very hard to do with those mouthpieces in. Yeah, I'm not very good. But... I'm so glad I didn't see any headgear. I hate headgear in Muay Thai matches. Yeah, it's, well, it's just tougher with headgear because your peripheral gets shrunk and you don't see certain things coming. It's just it's not a good a fight. bad deal. It's not a good fight because... Uh, they can't. You can't use your like you said. You, your peripheral vision's off, and then you're, you're not as good of a fighter with yeah. that crap on your on your head. Absolutely. They're they're really just feeling each other out on this third round. Yeah, you you know at this point you're trying to see where your opponent is at. Are they are they hurt? Are they are they ready to go? Is it you know? And Mikey tries to throw a lot of the fainting uh, fainting lead leg techniques to go to close the distance. Which is smart, but it's just hard if you don't if you're not able to fire off the techniques that you want to after the fake. Right. Oh. Oy. So Walter did the whole like uh, Manny Pacquiao hands up or Nate Diaz hands up and then threw a switch kick though. But great end to that fight. That that's yes. awesome. A little bit of showboating. Yes. Never hurt nobody. Yeah. Oh, well, unless you know you can't bring it. <laughs> and then you get yeah. knocked out after showboating. Did you see that video that um, Kelsey posted that somebody had made of like all the worst like trash talkers that failed? Yes. Oh man, I love that. I love watching that because uh, trash talking is one of those things where if you're if you're a great fighter and you trash talk, everybody loves you. Yeah, you're a fan favorite. You're you're selling tickets in the yep. whole nine. Everybody loves you. You're a trash talker and you can't back that up. Everybody hates you. And nobody wants to see you. Well, they want to see you get knocked out. Yeah, and everybody just wants to see you lose. And it's not, you know, and for us, that's just not something that we want to engage into. We don't want to be keyboard warriors. We want to make sure that we always try to make sure that people are respectful, you know, as much as possible. You know, we don't want to do anything, you know. We're there to fight. We're not there to offend people or anything like that. No. Really, just you know, it's 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 about the sport and the self improvement. And we talked we talked about this in a prior fight game podcast where um we t I forget who we were talking to. God, I wish I could remember who we were talking to. But anyway, we were talking to somebody about um the showboating and how important that is because again, you're trying to sell tickets at the end, at the end of the day, you're selling tickets. Mm -hmm. Um, you want people to come out of your fights and. How much of how much of how much does it hurt you to be a respectful fighter as opposed to being like a you know being a Conor McGregor yeah type character? How much does that hurt you? How much does that help you? At you the know? amateur level, I think it makes you get ignored. You know, you mean not being a showboater, right? Being a showboater gets you ignored. You think so? Yeah, because you know, it's amateur. You know, yeah. What are you doing? This yeah. is too much. Too yeah, much. What are you doing? It's too much right now. You're being extra. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to be that. I think, you know, uh, from an amateur perspective, I think it's um, it's important to... One, I think it's important for a lot of camps to emphasize that that's not all... That's that's the 1% of the 1% that can do that. You know what I mean? You got you to gotta be the top of the heap to be able to do that. Yeah. And unless your name is on a UFC contract or it's in front of somebody's gym. Work on your game. Don't yeah, work, work on your, your yeah. showmanship, right? Yeah, you don't have to work on your talk... Uh, trash talk you have to work on your game and that's what's really going to be more important that's you know you let your fists do the talking that's right what's your fist hey, you have eight limbs to talk with <laughs> that's why i love muay thai yeah because you've got eight limbs and and again valhalla was a great situation yep because muay thai rules absolutely don't water it down baby yeah and they're trying their best not to you know and i think it's important to again um, the way that they, Dave had described it was like, you know, he, our foundation is Muay Thai. Depending on if, if you want to change certain things, yes, we'll work with you on that. But our fundamental basis is Muay Thai. So I think that's, that's a really cool way to do it. And, you know, it's really awesome the amount of help from the, 
you know, Muay Thai and DMV, DMV Muay Thai community, the, you know, that it was able to be shown there because, you know, you had crew chase talk, you know, doing the refereeing, setting up the rules meetings and all that stuff. And right. really, really being able to give that good Thai perspective on what this is supposed to look like and what it's going to, what's going to happen here. Right. Um, you know, we just keep pushing the sport forward. Yeah. So I, so I gave you the, um, I gave you the, the list there of all yes. the fights. Give me your top three fights, top three fights. And then I want your, your fight of the night. Uh, t- okay. So, and don't be biased. <laughs> I mean, okay. So I have to kind of, I, I'll t- I'll give you my reasoning for this. So if we're ranking them, Number three to number one, uh, Jesse Natasha, number three, Crystal Maria, number two, but Mahmoud and Xander, no, uh, I, I can't call Mahmoud and uh, Xander, uh, you know, that fight was, of the night. That was a finish. Mm. There was a finish there, so I can't, I can't say that. But um, of the ones that went to a decision, yeah. I'd have to put Crystals at number one then, because I was thinking of my mood as uh, a three rounder, but it's not. So I'd have to I'd have to put that at at the my mood, uh not my mood. I'm sorry, Crystals at the top. I think High Seas was the fight uh, fight of the night. Had the most action, went the distance. Both you know it could have gone either way. I think that makes it for an exciting fight, and it's a really good fight. Uh, just real quick though, I do want to say for finishes. I, I I am having a toss up between my mood and um between my mood and uh what you would call it uh Ryan because because Ryan was the uh, Ryan was the KO that KO. was the KO KO that was the serious uh yeah. yeah so you go between the uh the puke the body shot the yeah. body shot puke or the uh or the or, or the, the KO full, yeah yeah I you know strings what? cut pow I got uh, yeah his legs did come come out from under him um. Okay, so this is this is how I, I'll I'll do it. I'm gonna have to go from three to one. Mm-hmm. Dwayne Powers versus Giovanni Wiley Miller. Okay, was my three. Okay. My two was Jesse Campbell versus Natasha Sotnichuk. I felt okay. like, and and largely because of the difference between uh, those two fighters. Mm-hmm was so pronounced yeah that it kept it interesting yeah nobody gave up anything yeah and it was and and I and I love those fights where it's like any any person's game yeah so that I I really enjoyed that one number 1 oh god man I have to I have to go with Crystal and Maria's yeah, fight I mean right? just as far as like putting on a clinic yeah and not boring anybody at yeah. any point like just it, the action the level of action that was in that in that fight was just phenomenal yeah i just i loved it and 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 again i'm i'm starting to boycott men's fights <laughs> cuz women fights for some reason just they bring it it used to be boring watching yeah. female fights N- no more they're out there they're trying to prove it man they're trying they're trying to, they're trying to carve out their place and you know they're trying to make sure that they have a seat at the table as as a draw and it's it's a valid, you know, it's a valid point. They can draw. They can they can be a draw because they can put on fights like that. You know, it doesn't have to be two dudes. It's all, you know what, and it's all all about the all the all about the videotape, man. It's all about the marketing has to get better for yeah. in this area. We got to have more fights on YouTube people can enjoy yeah. so that they can get excited because this is what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to go to my friends, my family, my fans, mm-hmm. and say, "Look at these two fighters," and then they go, "Whoa!" And then I go, "They're fighting next week. They're fighting two weeks." Yeah, come on out, check this out. Because a lot of times people, you know, I go, "Oh, there's some there's Thai Thai boxing happening, huh?" Yeah. What? What's that? When you want it, when you want them to be a name that they can, re- you know. Yeah. Remember my name. Remember the name. Um, and then of course uh, I agree with you, uh, Ryan versus Luke. That 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 shot. That was beautiful, man. Yeah, it was so well played. That was a short fight. That was, I think that was that 50 was seconds. Fi- yeah, fifty seconds. That was just yeah. it was short, but very sweet, man. Very yeah. very satisfying, and 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 I hope Luke's okay. I, I I feel bad being like, yeah, that shot you took was beautiful, but yeah, I mean, look, it really you, was. You guys put on a damn show, so yeah. thank you for that. Um, 
any any last words as far as uh as far as this fight goes man you know have to, again have to give props out to david arvello for putting this event together uh for the matchmaking and managing the event all the way through um i know that there were at some points it didn't feel as smooth but i also felt like any issues that came up people recovered from very well and i think as we continue as dave continues with you know putting on these promotions they they can only the the swing is only up right there's only an upside to this they they can only get better the both on uh, crowd participation and the teams that are participating uh we can get more exposure for a lot more teams right and i think that you know with um with the rising popularity of kickboxing it would be a cool platform to keep pushing women's combat sports yes uh, you know and yes. just muay thai overall altogether all absolutely you know and increasing that community i think you know the more awareness you have of it the more you know you you, you, you the more you can get people excited for these events i think it's just going to keep keep growing and keep keep getting better for everybody that's involved in it I and, think it, and and keep them coming every month i want to see a fight man oh like, that would be amazing I'm, wouldn't it yeah i mean there we have enough promoters that can do it right so we might as well and just, everybody's you know. always complaining about not getting fights like yeah there's no excuse let's make it happen yeah and you know and again it's understandable because with ticket sales that are involved you know you have that's the struggle with you know being amateur is that you know because you're not getting paid and you know you, you you're asking people to donate their money to this cause you know to watch you fight and you know you got to put on a show and, and you know what let me uh let me go ahead let me not be remiss here and i want to give a special shout out and thanks to all the sponsors of valhalla we have floyd's barbershop Got my haircut there before. They're amazing. Beautiful haircuts. Yeah. This guy has beautiful. I, I need to go wherever, wherever you go. You go to Floyd's? I've been to Floyd's, but they're, um, the one that I go to more often now is the Standard Barbershop in Fairfax. Oh, you go to Standard? Yes. You know, like all, all the hip dudes at my church go to Standard. They all have right? very clean haircuts, man. Yeah. They, yeah. I'm, I'm, we'll have to talk to them. Maybe they, they'll be interested in sponsoring the fight game. Who knows? There you go. Um, the Lake House uh, out there. Bungalow Lake House Bungalow in Sterling. Stable. In Sterling. Uh, thank you, guys. Great wings. Yeah, actually, seriously, I, I seriously. had their wings, man. Yeah. And their wings were, like, meaty, too. It wasn't these tiny little yeah. bastards. It was just some super chickens in yeah. there, man. Um, Lost Ryan, oh, God, I love your beer. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys were there. I was wondering if there was going to be any beer there. Somebody was mentioning that. They were like, somebody said, that's really good beer at this event. They were like, I was like, eh, it's Lost Rhino, so. Dude, it wasn't, it wasn't Budweiser. It wasn't Michelob Ultra. It was freaking <laughs> Lost Rhino craft beers. I had my uh, my IPA. I believe they're the ones uh, that have face plant, which is... IPA or Pilsner? It's, a, it's an IPA. Okay. You know, nice and hoppy. That's how I like it. I want to know I'm drinking beer when I drink it. You know what I mean? I don't want water. Give me that beer, bro. <laughs> um, shout out to Aria Med Spa, which I know a lot of fighters go out there to uh, get their get their uh, cryotherapy cryotherapy done, which is Oof. which is huge. That's a that's great for uh, recovery. No, you know what sucks is that I was running around in the back and in between fights so much that I wanted to visit that booth. So I I do want to try cryotherapy just to kind of get some you know for recovery and stuff. I really would love to try that. That's becoming uh, and I know Aria is 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 making their their bones here with um the with fight the, fight yeah. community here mm -hmm. and uh you know that's one of those things that you, all the fighters now are doing their cryotherapy it yeah. just speeds up the process and the recovery yeah and it's so important because like if we're looking at fighting every month you gotta you gotta be able to recover yeah so, absolutely shout out to aria and then finally gold's gym for putting on a great you know putting a having a great venue to put a fight on yeah who would have thought that uh that space you know i'm going to a gold's gym yeah to watch a fight yeah mother lover you going to gold's gym walk around you know go past all those machines and then you yeah. and then all of a sudden you're in a freaking arena yeah right there um the acoustics were good so yeah it, it, it's with with like hundreds of people there it sounded like there was thousands of people there the echo was really nice and it was really cool that whenever the crowd got into it you really felt that vibe and that energy in the crowd so it was really cool and anytime there was a good like you know body shot you know yeah. kick you you heard it it just reverberated I, that's what i was gonna say if you could hear the shots that's what even made it even better is like you know so and the away oh, yep. afterwards, I love the away. Oh, you get you guys have never been to a Muay Thai fight. If you don't hear aways, oh, you're not at a Muay Thai fight. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, yeah, and uh, thank you to uh, Gold's Gym again for that. And of course, this is Fight Game Podcast. You guys, you want to see some more of this? You want to see what's going on in the area, in the um, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area? First of all, if you're a fighter in this area and you're not supporting the Fight Game Podcast, shame on you. We're, we're here for you. We're here for you. We're, we're talking you about you, okay? We're here going to your fights. We're going to talk about you. We're going to put shine on you. That's what we're all about. And we want you guys to put shine on us. So make sure that you share, like, follow the whole nine. I want to know everybody. I'm Leo. This is Paul. So what do you got? And we want to know. Um, we want to know you guys. We want to talk about you guys. So make sure that you guys go and support the Fight Game Podcast. And we'll continue supporting you. Absolutely. All right. Good fights. Fantastic. I can't wait for Valhalla number three to be announced here on the show. So you guys stay tuned, all right? Yeah. All right, peace out. And now I'm going to stop the stream. <laughs>